I know it's, it's really early in the morning, but I think that's a good time to learn, right? When you are in the morning, your mind is like free and you can actually take that information. So AI, I'm not sure how much you have learned about it, but it's one of the most requested and used technologies nowadays. Yet, a study recently showed that most Canadians do not trust AI. Only 38% of Canadians believe AI will have a positive impact on Canada's economy. That's sad, right? Because we use AI all the time, everywhere, but we still don't trust it. A lot of people don't know maybe that they're using AI or they're ignorant to the fact to it. I don't know. But it's a sad fact that a lot of us don't actually trust that. I worked on AI specifically, like 10 years ago, started with that. It was like the break of the technology, but it was very specific to specific sectors, government, people with a lot of money, corporations, but now it's everywhere and anyone can do it. But since then, I'm always facing these questions. Is my job going to be safe in the future? Are we going to be obsolete by machines? How are we going to face the future with machines? But the most important one and the most question one, do you think those machines are going to take over and eliminate us? I just want to put a thought, very important thought, because a lot of people listen to the media and show those, you know, movies and TV and all of this thing and have that idea about AI. AI is not this. <laughs> it's definitely not this. And oh my God, it's not that. And don't get me wrong, at least not yet. Don't get me wrong, I love watching these movies and shows. I love watch sci-fi and these are imagination. This is our creativity and those shows give us ideas. But it's just sometimes people get the wrong idea about AI because they're watching these shows. Too much TV, you know? Now, back to the questions when they ask me, will these machines take over? The question is, haven't they? Okay, can anybody here tell me when was the last time that you have a question in your mind or something that you research and you went to the library to search it? No one. You snap one of those or you snap one of those little guys that you hold everyone every day and you Google it, right? No one carries, no one goes to the library doing all of researches for all of these things. That's AI when you want to go somewhere, by public transportation or with your car, you want to know which bus to take or how much traffic is going to be there. Google Maps. You don't have a car, like what, what happens to me this morning, Uber, right? Um, online shopping. When you want to connect with a friend or a family member or, with, or for business. Social media. LinkedIn. I don't know. Finding a job, right? Listening to your favorite music, or even just have some time playing games online. All of this is AI. So you can imagine how actually we are dependent on it. Imagine that the internet went off one day, and you can't use any of those. What's going to happen? Facebook's, you know, like I believe it's last month, Facebook stopped for four hours, people panicked. And that was just Facebook. So. AI is already dictating our day-to-day -day life. Now, I know that a lot of people are going to say, this is not what we mean by dictating or taking over. We're talking about some, a scenario like those films or, or TV shows that we show. So I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, about three years ago, I started a research about artificial consciousness. And it's a new technology that gives consciousness to machines. Not the way that you see on TV, it was actually based upon eliminating bias, because there's a lot of bias in AI, and we needed AI to be conscious enough to eliminate the bias data that we put into them. Now, that hit back on me too much, because I stupidly told, told everybody that I'm doing that. So I faced a lot of criticism. Uh, I had to answer many questions. Some of them are really irrelevant. but. The most important thing is that someone asked me, how can you sleep at night 
knowing that you're working on something that will end humanity. That might look funny to you, but actually that hurts when you hear it, specifically if it comes from someone you love and you care about. Specifically when you know that they don't mean to hurt you, it just came out from them. So I took off a little bit from that research um, for like a few weeks, gone back to my normal routine, and then I got back after around six weeks. And I started reading. This time, I'm just not reading to understand human consciousness. That was targeting to understand humanity itself, why we think what we think, why we do what we do. So I found myself reading more books about philosophy than technology, because I wanted to understand why we do things we do. Why do we say something that hurts someone we love, that we don't want to hurt, but we say it nonetheless? And I realized it's... You know, what drives us internally? Why do we feel what we feel and why we should be hurtful things? It's basic instinct, fear. Now, from my readings, fear is a very human instinct and it is not bad all the time. Fear is what guts us here. We feared, you know, animals, we feared um, uh, nature with its all dangers, and this is why we took a lot of precautions, and that's why we are here. Nonetheless, other ancestors have died. So fear is not all bad, but when it's targeted to the right target, and it's with the right amount. But fear nowadays, and it's maybe um, a lot of you know about this, that today we have a lot of fear. Fear of immigrants, fear of people who are different, skin color, faith, sexual orientations, whatever. And most of that fear is not well-targeted, panicking, and nonsensical. So when I looked at history, I realized that this happened every time in our history of humanity. Every big change in our life have done that panicking fear. A lot of people came out, strikes, with all those signs, the end is nigh, it's the end, we're doomed, we're gonna all die. And it's just not about technology or invention. Sometimes a social change, a big social change, got that fear as well. We fear change. So, as I said, fear is a primal drive. But if you look at history, from the, our very first inventions, like the invention of wheel, technology and inventions have been taking our jobs for, since the dawn of history. Like, if you, if you read about history, you realize that before the invention of wheel, if you want to take anything, like, heavy, you would have to hire those big, hulky, bulky guys to take these heavy things with you, and then you give them some food, which was the, actually the exchange money at that time. Then, wheel came in, and now you don't need those guys anymore. You can just have a plaque of wood, attach those little rounding thing around, Put them by yourself or with the help of someone, and you can drag them anywhere you want. I like to think sometimes that it created something like um, a global um, recession at the time, or there was like a lot of strikes of people, like this amazing cartoon that you can see here. But think about it. Wheel has actually created a lot of jobs through history. We wouldn't have automotive industry, which is one of the biggest industries in the world that hire people, if we didn't invent wheel. So wheel has killed some jobs, but it's also created a lot of jobs. As you can see in this, global employment for automotive industry is about 8,400,000. And this thing happened as well. Automotive at one point was hiring maybe the most, like in the 50s to the 60s until late 80s or 90s, were hiring the, some of the most people in this industry, in every industry. And it was growing up. But then automation came in, and most of those industry workers or the, the automotive workers are not needed anymore. So it went a little bit on down. Yet, that's because of automation of AI, yet, the industry of technology went up because we need more people to create this. 
I think you understand what, what we're talking here is that all over our, our history, innovations might kill something, but they rise something else. Now, the thing is, AI is not just something that you program. AI now creates AI. All the, the application that you see here, whether it's uh, Microsoft Azure or um, um, Google's AML, you can go there, you can just pay a, lot of, a little money, and you can create your own AI application without writing a line of code. So AI is now building AI, because all of these platforms are built on AI, and you can create your own AI. And it was like similarly like people giving birth to other people, which is kind of scary, maybe, because they're now simulating us. So let's talk a little bit facts. First of all, there's nothing called generic AI. There is nothing that simulates the whole human brain. AI is task-based. So if we want to do uh, something that automates you finding a taxi, like Uber, that's what the AI is doing. That's what Uber is doing. It's just automated to do that, but they don't do anything else. It's not a human brain. It, may, it, it creates a, uh, sorry, it, it concentrates on a task, but it does it really faster than we do, because it's just one task. That's what we call narrow AIs. And AI does not replace jobs. As you can see, it replaces tasks. So because we are creative, beings, we, because we are creative creatures, we are very keen on replacing those tasks that are iterative and boring and all of these things with, with machines so we can concentrate on tasks that need more creativity, that needs more innovation. So that's why we try to replace these jobs all the time through history, thousands of years before AI. Now, there's a problem with that. Replacing a task, then a task, then a task, will eventually replace a whole job. So multiple AIs might replace a full job. Now, AI is also replaces and displaces jobs. We have to understand that once AI replaces a job, it also displaces it to something else. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, there's another thing that also AI learns by itself and recreates itself. So. AI creates jobs that are actually non-technical jobs. If, if you want to go to any of those technical companies, there's not all technical people there. There are marketing people, there are sales people, there are janitors, there are everything, right? So these companies that are creating all these things are creating jobs for people who are not in tech. Not just that. In May 2017, Facebook have hired 405,000 content moderators around the world making that up to 7,500. Those content moderators are not technical. They just look at the content and say if it's good for a human consumption or not. So that's also non-technical. We have to know also that um, these jobs in the future might be also replaced by machines. So we'll have to jump to the other challenge. Automation and AI, this has some, this, some displacement. Um, but I was looking into those things, like creative jobs have not been affected too much. Technology jobs went really over. And it goes on and on. I've looked at a lot of the other jobs, and those are re real facts. And I noticed that in Japan specifically, a lot of them were in declination because Japan is one of the most countries that uses AI and automation. But here's the fact that also shocked me. Japan is the most country that's really in AI and automation and robotics, yet it has one of the lowest unemployment rates in the history, and Japanese people work too much that the government is trying to make them work less. So I looked in, and I, and I tried to find out, searched into what's in Japan, and it's not fair to compare Japan to any place in the world. It's very different. It looks like a different planet sometimes. It's very innovative and very advanced. So it's not fair to compare it, but while I was studying, I realized that AI might not be our bigger problem. We have overpopulation. We are growing into too much numbers, that even if AI was not there, we might not be able to replace these jobs or place jobs enough for the people that we are growing. Too much growth of people. But 
again, there's a good news. AI growth is now in decline. Uh, sorry, <laughs> overpopulation now is in a kind of a declination. People are realizing that we don't need to reproduce more because we have healthcare and we now people living more and, you know, the, the life expectation is good and it's too much expensive to have more kids nowadays. Education. This is very important. Many of the things that we study right now, when I look at those millennials are studying at the uh, college, I feel sad for them because many of those jobs are going to be disappearing in five or ten years. So the bottom line is we're educating youth for the jobs of yesterday, at least their yesterday. And when you look at children and they wanted to be doctors or engineers or whatever, these jobs, most of them might actually be long gone. We also have worker skills. A lot of these, these companies are not concentrating on developing the worker skills for the, for the change of the jobs of tomorrow. There are no trainings. And this study shows that 370 million workers might need to switch occupational categories. That needs training. Okay, so forget about that, and let's see, should we still fear AI after all that we hear? First of all, AI is helping us in climate change, agriculture, education, healthcare, cybersecurity, and all of this thing. So what I'm saying is, if machines are trying to eliminate us, they're doing a very bad job, actually. Actually, they suck in trying to eliminate us, right? Uh, last year, I was at CIX. It's a conference for innovation, and it's, you know, when you say innovation and conference, most of the companies there were in technology, and many of them were in AI. And I heard that quote, there's no match for human ingenuity and empathy. I couldn't think about more, about a better quote than that, because we created AI, and it's our ingenious that made that. Those machines, no matter what intelligence they have or empathy they will, they're going to be a fraction of what we have. Machines are tools. It's the evilness of people using them is what you should fear. And we have a lot of challenges in our history, a lot of them. Maybe some of them were felt at the time bigger than this, but we have survived. All of this, we have survived and we have thrived. Last word for you guys to know, I always say this to people, the greatest risk we took as humans is when we left the safety of cave to the unknown dangers of the outside world. Everything after that is just a breeze. Thank you.